Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace and blessings be upon you all and Jummah Mubarak on this blessed day. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yadihillahu fala mudillala wa man yudlilhu fala hadiyala. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Wa ashadu la sharika lahu. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek help from Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray and whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. Bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is his servant and messenger. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuta'illah wa rasooluhu faqad faza fawzan azimah Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyama kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakum O ye who believe be mindful of Allah be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves, and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. O oh, ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah and say that which is right. Speak the truth. Allah will bless your deeds for you and forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger of Allah has truly achieved a great triumph. And O oh, ye who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed to those who came before you that you may become God conscious, that you may learn self-restraint, that you may be mindful of Allah. Again, assalamu alaikum. It's a blessing to be back here with you all. Today, the khutbah topic that I have put together is uh, on the subject of the road to Ramadan. So as we know, Ramadan is approaching uh, for some of us, whether we see it as very fast or it was expected, um, but each year it seems to catch us by surprise. And I feel like this may be an annual thing, uh, given that it goes on the lunar calendar and comes 10 days back each year. But in general, there's there's always this aspect of turning the page on the new year and then seeing, oh, no, ho, oh, not no, oh, no, but like, oh, wow, like, you know, Ramadan is just around the corner. You know, some communities are getting busy preparing different things and whatnot. So the anxiety level starts to go rise, it starts to rise up. But uh, Ramadan comes in, in a blessed way and just as quickly as it comes, it so often leaves. And what we oftentimes see with Ramadan is that it's such a heavy month that is not just physically uh, needing from us, but also spiritually in a sense. And it requires a great deal of preparation, but as I mentioned, we oftentimes are caught off guard, uh, even if we have it on our calendars the day before Ramadan or even a couple of days before, like, oh, it's, you know, it's just around the corner. And as I mentioned, you know, it's, it's something that we may take for granted in that sense where we may stumble into it, but it requires the kind of preparation that we think of if we go for a marathon or if we do a triathlon or we do some high endurance activity these types of things require a, a good degree of preparation, a good degree of training and uh, planning well in advance. Uh, it's not so often that you just kind of roll out of bed and go run a 5K or a 10K or a marathon or uh, you know a triathlon or do all these different things. You have to kind of be able to be built up into that space and be mentally, physically, uh, and you know all uh, in a sense ready for whatever is about to come. And so when we think of Ramadan, however, it oftentimes doesn't feel like uh, in the in, in the buildup to it, like the spiritual marathon that it does when we're right in the midst of it. That when we think about Ramadan as a spiritual marathon, it's not one that just requires our bodies in a sense of fasting. It's one that requires all of our body. It requires mind, body, and soul holistically. It requires our spiritual selves as much as it requires our physical self as well. But so often, just like we mentioned with respect to getting up 
the day before the day of a marathon, rolling out of bed and then just going and running. So often with Ramadan kind of coming around the corner and, and feeling like it may blindside us in a sense, we sometimes just take Ramadan like that, that we just roll out of bed and, you know, now it's Ramadan and 30 days, we'll just kind of repeat, uh, do everything that we've been doing just like that, but not maybe do so in a mindful way. And what's very interesting is that as we were just reading in the Quran here, just lifted up with the final verse, that fasting was prescribed for us that we might become mindful in this element of mindfulness. But so often we take the road to Ramadan, so often we go into Ramadan, not very mindful of what all it in encapsulates beyond the element of fasting. And we see the Prophet ﷺ lift up that there are those who will fast and they get nothing from their fast except hunger. And there's those who will pray and they get nothing from their prayer, their prayer except for uh, sleepless nights. And so there's this aspect of being able to do your ritual worship, of being able to do your ibadah, but to do it in an unmindful way and to only get a deprivation rather than to be given anything of substance that you can take away. Because these activities, as much as we feel that we are sacrificing and we are taking away from ourselves, whether we are sacrificing our uh, nourishment or whether we're sacrificing our sleep, um, there is a reward in there for us as well. There is something for us to gain as well. But if we don't do it mindfully, it's only an activity of uh, loss that, that comes about. And the Quran, as I mentioned, lifts up here in Surah Al-Baqarah that fasting is prescribed that we might become more God conscious, that we may become more aware, not just more aware of Allah, but when we're more aware of Allah, when we're more conscious of Allah, when we have that, that fear, the healthy fear of Allah, that um, this, this aspect of Ihsan where we are mindful that Allah sees us, but we know that we cannot see Allah, but that we are in this uh, heightened sense of knowing that Allah is aware and we are aware that Allah is aware that we are then more mindful of our surroundings. We are more mindful of the uh, actions that we do. We are more mindful of ourselves, the intentions that we have. We are more mindful of all of the things that are around us because everything that is around us belongs to Allah. Um, and, and we become more aware of all of these things. And so when we think about this road to Ramadan, this road to Ramadan can oftentimes feel like the road less traveled when we think about it. As I mentioned, Ramadan usually just comes and then it just goes in a sense. We, we, we have it, like I said, on our calendars, but so often it comes in a way that we don't feel like uh, we may have done the preparation work or we just kind of take it as soon as it comes. We have the first day of Ramadan when it becomes and when it's there, we'll jump onto it. But we may not see that road that is going to Ramadan as a preparatory road. We may just be counting down the days until we're now shifting the way we do our work schedule, our prayer schedule, our routines and everything, our gym schedule, whatever it may be. We may just have that date marked on our calendar and say, okay, I can do everything I can do up until that date. And then we're going to you know, just change things over. But we don't see it as a bit of transition in a sense that this is the day that Ramadan starts. Now, how does the time that I have remaining from now until then, what do I do differently? How do I adjust it? What can I change in that space? And so when we look at Ramadan, when we look at the preparation for Ramadan, you see that this is something that is not novel. This is something that is not new for you know Muslims nowadays uh, with with all of our uh, different like apps and techniques and ways to prepare for things in advance uh, with different technologies. But preparing for Ramadan is a very prophetic practice. It's something the earliest Muslims would do. It's something that the Sahaba would do. It's something that the Ahlul Bayt would do. They they would know that with Ramadan comes a lot of there, there's a, a lot of substance. There's a lot of significance. There's a sacredness that is there, uh, and so. So they would yearn not, uh, not just for Ramadan, but they would prepare for it in advance. They would be in that space where they're, uh, they, would, they would pray to, for Allah to let them see Ramadan, to see the next Ramadan. Um, and so they would always be in this mindset of wanting to come to meet, to be in Ramadan. And it comes from an aspect as well uh, it, it, that, that, we can, uh, that we can visualize. Uh, there's a uh, narration of Imam Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the fourth Khalifa of Islam uh, and the cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu who one time you know was making wudu and you know his face would just kind of be like just as if like it's just like white like in a sense not just like literal white but just like as if he's seen a ghost and his companions his uh, you know the other Sahaba that are around would ask like are you okay and he was just like I'm about to go meet my maker <laughs> like he's like it's getting doing wudu going for salah 
Um, and he has that aspect of, of, you know, just kind of being in the zone with respect to spirituality, uh, that they're just focused on knowing that what, what this entails. And this was just for an ordinary salah that he was offering here. But think about now, what, it, what would folks who do this kind of stuff, who, who have that kind of fortitude and intentionality, how would they interact with, uh, with respect to Ramadan? So when we prepare for Ramadan, when we think about being on this road uh, and what it means to not just have a successful Ramadan, but how to get to a successful Ramadan, we want to be as, as intentional as we can, but also be as realistic as we can. We want to set tangible goals. It may feel that like during Ramadan, we have to cash in on every single thing that we can, maximize every single thing that we can, and we end up maybe burning ourselves out. We don't do everything that we intend to do, and we end up feeling like we're a failure. And so we feel a lot worse uh, after Ramadan than we did before Ramadan. Uh, but we want to be able to be mindful of our goals. We want to be able to be mindful of our limits. We want to be able to be realistic with ourselves because as the Prophet ﷺ taught, the one who knows himself knows their Lord. And if the objective of Ramadan, if the objective of fasting is that we become more mindful of Allah, more aware of Allah, that has to start at home. We have to become more mindful and more aware of ourselves. We can't just be living a lie and thinking that uh, we know everything around us. We know everything here. Now we'll know Allah. We'll be more mindful of Allah. It doesn't, that, that, that work has to start at home first. So when we think of ourselves here and we think about, in a sense of preparing for Ramadan, think about one good action. One habit that you can work on, you can build, you can incorporate, and, and see how that one action can be built into a habit. Studies show that anywhere from like 18 days to you know, over a year, but a, a good number around 30 days can be used if used intentionally to build a habit. And a hadith of the Prophet on this famous narrates that uh, the best actions are those that are done consistently, consistently, even if they're moderate or slight, just consistent actions that are done. Um, and so picking up a good habit, doing a good habit, uh, is uh, thinking about whatever that means to you. It doesn't have to be something extravagant over the top, but just doing something that you may not have been doing before. But now because Ramadan, uh, which is like the speed lane on Mario Kart, like allows you to boost up and, uh, you know, continue to get to a better space, what can you incorporate that will be something that lasts after Ramadan? We see these actions can be something as simple as uh, as our Prophet ﷺ lifted up the stories of those people who would pick up a trap, who would pick up a piece of trash or a harmful object from the road, or would feed uh, or give water to a thirsty dog, or would clean the masjid, and how each of these people would be forgiven for their sins, would be uh, those who would be blessed um, by Allah for their small actions. But just thinking about that small actions in Islam, small uh, actions that are there are not in any essence uh, downgraded in comparison to large actions, that actions are by their intentions. So if your intention is pure, that action can be as small as, 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 as we think. But in a sense here, if we adopt it, if we adopt it intentionally, it has the potential to become something very blessed and have a lot of an immense reward for us to offer. And also on the flip side, apart from the good habits, thinking about breaking a bad habit, that just as much as we're focused on incorporating something that's good, adding something that's good, whatever a good thing might be for us in a sense, um, that, that is building into this aspect to make us more aware, but also helping us to become more uh, cognizant of Allah, that we also think about breaking a habit. We let go of a habit as well that maybe put some distance between us and Allah, put some distance between us and the people around us, put some distance between us and our spirituality. So breaking a habit as well that is not beneficial. And studies also show that in the same range that it takes to build a habit, it also takes the same amount to, uh, can take the same amount to break a habit as well. So looking at 30 days as a metric of intentional 30 days where you abstain from food and water and you're immersed in your faith and your spirituality and your community uh, and, and, and however it may be for you, that using this as well as a way to develop and to grow. So if we leave Ramadan with nothing else but having taken on a new habit and left the old a bad one, then we've had, in a sense, a measurably very successful Ramadan. That if that's a habit that you continue from here on out, if that's a habit that you've left here on out, you've had a very successful Ramadan because it has implications in the hereafter. And lastly, Allah tells us in the Quran that it was in the month of Ramadan that the Quran was sent down. And so this is the month apart from fasting, 
This is the month of divine revelation. This is the month of connection to Allah, that as we lift it up, uh, the month of mindfulness for Allah, awareness of Allah. And awareness of Allah begets the awareness for all of these other things that are around us, and starting with awareness of ourselves. And so also in thinking about what habits we can incorporate, think about as well, incorporating the habit of where we regularly engage with the speech and the words of Allah. Even if we didn't do so previously, even if we did it uh, do in a way um, that you know is uh, maybe you know not the most grandiose. We're not you know reading a juz a day. We're not doing uh, memorizing the entire Quran over Ramadan. But you know we are doing it in a way that is mindful of our limits. Um, so don't think that by the time you're at the end of Ramadan that you are a failure because you didn't finish the whole Quran or you didn't do all of the different things that you did. But if you left Ramadan building some kind of a relationship with the Quran that you hadn't had before, whether you're reading it some, some way regularly, whether daily or in some frequency that you hadn't had before, that is also a successful Ramadan to, to be able to incorporate that speech of Allah. So while we still have time, while we are still a couple of weeks, three weeks or so away from Ramadan, we want to take this time just like we would if we were to, if I was to tell you, you have a marathon or you have a race that you have to prepare for uh, in three or four weeks, thinking about what we would have to do to get ready for that race, to get ready for that marathon, to make a training plan for how we would prepare for that marathon, or in this sense, making a training plan, making a spiritual plan for the spiritual marathon that we know as Ramadan. Don't Put all of our all all of the eggs that you have in one basket with respect to Ramadan. That oh, only the good deeds I do, all the habits, everything like that, all this good stuff that we're talking about, that can only be done in Ramadan. No, that uh, to to use this road to Ramadan not just as a, a the end of a cliff that like oh here's Ramadan and then just falling straight down and just going into the throes of Ramadan, but using this as a gradual way to build into Ramadan. If you haven't fasted before Ramadan, try fasting to build it up. If you haven't read the Quran very often, try reading it a little bit. If you haven't done any kind of aspect of your spirituality in, or incorporating it in a way that you would during Ramadan, don't make Ramadan just that one-off kind of event. Build up into it. Do something that allows you to prepare into it. If you're going to go run a marathon, you sure as heck be able to at least run a 5K or run a 10K or at least be mobile enough to, to, to do something to, to, to get to that point of going for a marathon. So in the same way, whether you're going into that uh, aspect of Ramadan for fasting, for uh, reading the Quran, for all these different things, building up in different ways that allow you to incorporate these habits so that it doesn't feel like it's black and white when you uh, transition into uh, from Sha'ban into Ramadan. And so thinking about, like we mentioned, whether it's the reading of the Quran, whether it is the incorporating of a good deed or a good habit, leaving a bad habit, these shouldn't be saved just for Ramadan. Ramadan shouldn't feel like it's the qualifiers or the trial rounds for uh, our for our marathon or for our contest or here. But Ramadan treat, being treated like the Olympics for us. It's the spiritual Olympics for us. And what are we going to do to medal at these Olympics? What are we going to have to do to get a medal at this Olympics and to say that we've had a successful outing at these Olympics, these spiritual Olympics of Ramadan? As we said, the actions... They don't need to be grandiose. They don't need to be lofty. They can be slight, but they are done with intentionality. And at the end of the day, can we say that in our Ramadan, when we finished it, that we felt more God conscious and we're more aware of Allah, or do we not feel it? Seeing that as a litmus test for us, if we feel towards the end of Ramadan, have the things that we've been doing, or even in the buildup to Ramadan, are the things that we are doing, that we're practicing out, that we're trialing out, do they make us feel more connected to Allah? Or are they maybe putting more of a wedge between us? And evaluating that before you get into Ramadan because of all the things that Ramadan has in that sense. And if we don't, how can we then do so? Making our habits and our changes, whether we're shedding habits, reflective of that degree of ihsan, that element of ihsan that the Prophet taught us of being able to worship Allah, praying to Allah as if we see Allah, but we know that we don't see Allah, we can't see Allah, but that Allah sees us, and to do so in a way that's fully mindful. And lastly, to do so mindful that there are those of us, our loved ones, people who we know, people who've come before, who may not have been able to make it 
to this marathon, who may not have been able to make it to the space with us, um, who have passed before this, or even during Ramadan, who may not be able to, because of uh, different abilities or uh, because of different things that are different conditions, may not be able to participate as fully. And so being mindful of the privileges that we do have when we are participating, and when we are going into Ramadan, that even in this road up, to just be able to think about Ramadan, to just be able to prepare for Ramadan is a privilege and so to not take that for granted in any way, shape or form. And so we ask Allah to enable us to have a successful and blessed Ramadan, to allow us to uh, continue the hopes, to continue the prayers, to continue all of the endeavors of those who had passed before Ramadan, that may we inshallah be those to allow, to enable these things to come to fruition and to be those torch bearers for those individuals and to allow our Ramadan to be a successful Ramadan, reflective of the Prophet Sallallahu reflective of the earliest uh, Muslims and reflective of the aspirations that Ramadan and fasting have been prescribed, that we may become more God conscious, inshallah. We, before we close in, in, in our prayer here, inshallah, uh, we just want to lift up a couple of prayers from our community with respect to uh, some of our members who have passed away. Uh, Sister Yasmin Odat, um, lifted up uh, a prayer for her recently deceased cousin, uh, Amir Rabi, um, who died from a car accident co complications. Allah we belong to Allah we return. And uh, one of our board members, uh, Sister Sadia Termizi, um, her father, Amin Termizi, passed away um, just recently after a battle with leukemia. Uh, we remember him and her family, and as well as uh, the family of Yasmin, and all those who've experienced loss, and all of those who are going through a very difficult time in this time, building up to Ramadan especially, uh, we keep them in our prayers and in our hearts, inshallah. To Allah we belong, and indeed to Allah we return. I say these words of mine, I ask Allah for forgiveness for you and for all the Muslims, and again, uh, to everyone here, may Allah make uh, this preparation to Ramadan, may Allah allow us to go into Ramadan in a way that is uh, that is befitting of the standard that the Prophet Sallallahu has set and the standard which Allah holds us to. We ask Allah to forgive those who have passed from amongst us, to give us the opportunity in our limited lifetimes to continue their good work that they did, and to always work to uh, be uh, improving and being consistent worshipers of Allah, and to cleanse our hearts of any impurities, teaching us how to polish it, to be of those with a, a pure sound heart, a qalbin salim, that uh, we enter Ramadan with a sound heart, and to guide us all to the right path that guide us the path of those whom Allah has bestowed favor and not those who Allah has incurred, has uh, given displeasure, been displeased with. And we ask Allah to allow us to enter and to leave this Juma better than we came to it and to allow us to leave every place better than we came to it. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ta'ala ala Ibrahima wa ala ala Ibrahima inna kaabid majid rabbana atina fi dunya hasnatu wa fi al-akhirati hasnatu wa kina atab al-nar rabbana wa takabal dua ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب. جزاك الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته. Blessings to you all on this Friday and inshallah in the preparation for Ramadan.